Take two. Right. <laughs> I wanted to show you a little bit about what we actually found here, is, um, or what's going on here, I guess you could say. is uh, This system here is completely separate. It runs and uses this tank. They, uh, they share a potable water supply through the, the pot water heater, that tank, and then there's a coil inside this tank. That's all the same water system. And that's all in this plumbing. This plumbing here isn't going to be pressurized. We had a pump here that we removed thinking that we were going to be able to hook the hose up and get the water to flow as it heated and stuff. And now we're kind of thinking we probably should have rerouted it completely different, but it's working now and we'll be able to show you how, how it all works. Um, and then we have a pump sitting here on top of the hot water heater that's for this system, and that's to circulate the water in the drain back part of it. And we had to actually build a valve to make it fairly similar to the valve that we were able to purchase. And so we had to build some valving so we could actually fill the system and get some air pressure in it. Because it has to be up between 10 and 15 PSI to run, run right. And basically, uh, the biggest problems we had, like the leaks, the big things here is we had leaks here, the, the fittings that came with it just would not stop leaking. So we ended up cutting everything off. I had to actually tear down that whole the manifold part and solder on some fittings that wouldn't leak. So and we've got everything's working pretty good there. Here's the clear hose, so you'll be able to see what's going on in this system. And uh, as long as we got everything here, we'll uh, work on trying to get get it to work a little bit, so you can guys can actually see some of the temperatures. And if you want to come over here, you can actually see the controllers and the valving and stuff we're going to use. So is one of your labs like allow your students to take a shower and see how long they can stay in there or something? Or we're going to give them the polar know? bear award to see how long they can stay in there with cold water. Yeah. Now one of the labs they have to calculate based on the readings that they get how much money this would save them in a year. Okay, so these are our two system controllers. Um, this controller here it has two temperature gauges, a pressure gauge here. And you can see that it's pressurized, and the pressure did go up, you're right, it must be temperature. Um, so th this system, of course, runs this, has a pump integrated with it, runs this fluid up through here, back down, and there's a coil, a stainless steel coil in there, transfers the heat to the potable water. And so there's two, these Kalefi um, controllers, they have preset options that you can use. And how they work is you've got two sensors. You've got a sensor up here that detects the temperature of the fluid running here, as well as down at the bottom of the tank, which is where they are. Oh, right here. So what happens is you can, there's two adjustments. Um, you've got your collector temperature, which right now is showing 87.4 degrees. And the tank temperature is saying that it is 60 degrees. And so how you set it up, let's see if we can. So you have two, two temperature settings. There's a differential in temperature. And one setting um, tells the pump to turn on, and the other setting tells the pump to turn off. And it's a difference in temperature. So right now, have it set at 30 degrees difference between that and that sensor. So if we turn this down, there we go. So I'm going to turn this way on so it forces the pump to go on. And on a normal day, if it was sitting out here and the hot water heater had been able to be plugged in overnight, it'd be a little faster, but with the weather last night, we weren't able to plug the hot water heater in last night. <laughs> Nobody was able to get in while the lab was open. So. so you can hear the system running right now. And basically, it's going to run until... You, you can assume we can hear it. Oh. Huh? Well, you can I'm come up and touch the card old. also. We're, we're, we're old. Come and touch it right here. Yeah, if you want to touch the, touch the valving up at the top, you can feel the water yeah. flowing. And then pressure, the pressure went up slightly as well. We're not all old. So there's that system. And then
then this system over here controls the drain back, like Billy was saying. And it controls this pump that circulates the distilled water, which is what we're using for the medium to transfer the heat to the pump water. And right now the collector is saying it's 111, and the tank is at 48. And you got to remember that's because the, the potable water is only in a coil in that tank. So the rest of the water is whatever the temperature was out here this morning. So, and where the hot water heater did barely got plugged in, we probably don't even have water, the temperature of the water going through that coil yet. So. All right, where is it going? Now, was this designed for a demonstration purpose for the uh, DET T program? The ET program? Yeah, and MET program. It's for the new sustainability class that just barely got approved. Right. Okay. Oh, here we go. Just, just wondering what the. the I missed the very beginning on the yeah, purpose of it. Oh, yeah. 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 This guy's job. It, was, it was for the purpose of three journals of teaching. Now, you have three design graphics people on it versus one manufacturing person. Yeah. And then he's a welder. What problems did you guys see in not having um, where you guys have, were limited on actual production yeah. versus maybe overloading him versus not overloading him? Well, what what well, did you guys see? To, I was able to step up and, and do what needed to be done on this car. So yeah. I did all of the welding, and uh, we all took turns with the soldering, but as far as all the welding, plasma cutting, and uh, general fabrication, I took care of it. I, did you guys help on the cutting of the material? Yeah. And, yeah. And sizing all the sizes? Yes. 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 Did you find enough design work for three design graphics for people coming on here? Um, no, we were helping drill holes, <coughs> <laughs> measuring, cut all the, the stuff and getting it ready. Uh, that was a big part of it. They'd come in in the morning, uh, Rick and uh, um, Kelly would come in early in, the, early in the morning and get all the parts ready. And basically, for me, the hard part was is I didn't know how to weld. So when I came in with Jefferson, I'd be the one that ended up clamping and holding things and grinding and doing all that part of it. So and, he, and I just made sure that he always had something to do, and he just pumped it out. He did a good job doing that. I'd say the only downside to not having more manufacturing experience was all our plumbing leaks. None of us had ever done anything with copper piping as far as plumbing went. and it would have been nice if there was a, it might have been easier if we had here. more people that had, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think everybody that owns their own home and have done this, yeah. uh, they need to get it right the first time. Anyway. Yeah. Like 10 times. <laughs> it's, it's hard. It's the stuff that's a, that's why plumbers get paid so much. They can actually do that. So do you think this has been successful or not successful? What do you guys think? I'd say overall it's successful. I'd say the only thing that, the only downside was, like Rick said with the scheduling and stuff, was it would have been nice to get a lot more testing done so we could have given Jeremy more information to create a lab, a, a fuller lab. Now, now he's stuck basically having to play with it during the summer or something to figure out how it works. So, and just because we could not provide that information with all the leak, fixing all the leaks, we just weren't able to test it enough. So. I'd say that was the only real downfall, but it all works. Everything, uh, I did have it out here one day for four hours in the sun and got it to work. I mean, it, everything worked, proper temperatures and everything. So we had the hot water heater plugged in for about two days and it works. So. Have you got this plugged into the water right now? It's mm -hmm. in or? No, we don't have it. No. Um, but, if yeah, I, if, but if I did, I could have the water come in here and I could hit this tap right there and have hot water coming out? Yeah. And that's part of what I was saying when we first got out here is I think I think the only thing that really needs to be changed if we really wanted to make it effective is since this, we're trying to separate the systems and honestly since so little water is in the coil for the drain back, we really should have just ran a, ran the pipe completely through and stuck a pump back in there. And then we could circulate the hot water faster instead of just using the heat transfer properties, you know, of the water to try to do it. And so that was the only the only um, thing that I would say might need to be changed if we wanted it to be a hundred percent perfect. Right. Would be to put the we have the pump where you can see right there. But the way the way it was hooked up before, we could put the pump back in, we kept all the pieces. But I think it it would also be easier if, if we just where it goes in instead of coming to here, you just run it into there and then out of here and then back into there. So it's just one continuous loop instead of two separate systems with ball systems. 
that's the only real change that we came up with that might be an improvement as far as getting this to be more practical. But otherwise, it's <coughs> Okay, now it's working. We gotta open the valve. So how stable is this technology? I know the collector technology <coughs> seems to be changing rapidly. So how many years will this setup be useful before it's before you have to update whatever you need to update? Um, See, look how fast that. I'm not 100 percent sure on that one. I know talking to so the supplier, we actually had him come out here and go over this with us a little bit about so halfway cool through this semester. Yeah. And these right now. Um, haven't changed it at all. I mean, they changed a lot up until about two or three years ago, and they've been pretty much the same. And he says there's not a whole lot more you can do to them and still make it safe. On a, on a home, you so, see more of these panels. Um, and just as far as the flat panels, the, that, that technology is so old, it hasn't right. changed yeah, in years. Have I mean, they changed the installation, uh, one to four panels. So the idea size does not change. Well, How many people it's still a matter of this, 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 this setup. You need to go to the bottom of the top. And this the setup here that needs to let the water. This is so insulated inside. Where those you have the last tubes.